from the mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. So Phoenix BT is contemplating buying a Studio Bricks booth, and I know that Jeff was looking at one too, and some of you may be thinking to yourself, do I need a booth? So I've had this booth since 2015. It's a Studio Bricks One. Um, I got it in early 2015. It's by far one of the best decisions I ever made in my life, ever. A career-altering decision. So um, I had been squirreling away every nickel and dime I could for quite a while to try to buy a booth, and it just so happened that one morning I look on eBay, and that morning, a couple hours earlier, this booth had been listed. And even better, it was listed by a seller in the next town over. So I messaged the guy right away and I'm like, can I come take a look at it? And he's like, of course. So we get it to my house and it's all in pieces. So Studio Bricks, um, these things are modular. They're like Ikea meets Lego. So it's all a bunch of like little pieces. It's not like here are four walls and a ceiling and a door. So they all kind of stack up on top of each other. And you build this thing like, like a giant Lego house. And the door... This door over here weighs like 250 or 300 pounds. So it was a little bit like it was a little bit dicey for a moment there. There were a couple of scary moments trying to get it into place because you kind of build the floor in the first couple of layers and then you slide the door in, which is not the easiest thing to do. And it weighs 250 pounds. I think this booth weighs 600 pounds or maybe more. So it's sitting on the ground floor in my house, obviously. And, um, but you want to put it someplace that will be able to support the weight of it. Yeah, it's a, it's very heavy. Uh, putting it together took like a couple hours, maybe if that, and then, um, what, what actually about this booth is the Studio Bricks One. So if you're looking at a, at the Studio Bricks One, just realize that this booth is actually on the outside. It's three and a half feet wide on the outside and then four and a half feet like depth, right? And uh, so you have to uh, you have to realize that even this, the larger one, I think the one plus is still only three and a half feet wide. It's just a little bit deeper. And so um, with the since I had to like furnish all of the uh, sound treatment myself, you know, I built these um, these acoustic panels by hand. So it's just really wood frame, uh, rock wool insulation, and uh, cloth on the outside. And of course, when you do that, you always want to put like a kind of like a, a cheese cloth or something in between the outside cloth and the rock wool so it doesn't leach through the cloth at any point. So, um, but they're really easy to build, really simple to build and very cheap to build and very effective. It really, it really uh, helps the, uh, the low end, uh, controlling the low end. I have uh, panels all over. Um, the ceiling is, uh, is all just regular two inch, uh, foam, you know, like off the shelf foam because it's lightweight. I didn't want to build one of these and put it above my head. And, um, and the way you, you hold these up on the wall is with uh, heavy duty Velcro. So there's probably about 15 like Velcro strips and they're all rated to hold like 50, 75 pounds. And then you use super glue on the, on the sticky side of the Velcro tape on both sides so to make sure it sticks so velcro holding these up and um you know just a uh, regular glue like acoustic panel glue up there and there are some like uh you, you'll see uh some like base trap type stuff like in the corners there's like base trap like foam and there's some stuff wedged up top it could look a little neater but and then led lights on the inside because they're very low power and um and i like kind of the the vibe uh, overall, I've got LED lights on the on the roof of the booth, just to give it a little bit more vibe outside of the booth. And um, up top, there's a ventilation pipe um, that just really it's uh, when you get the booth, it's just really a, a an opening with a cap on it. Um, and I I basically fitted a a tube on it, just a flexible uh, ventilation tube that goes to this fan that's uh, on the other side of the closet. So the fan is running very low, just pulling air, warm air up and out. Um, and uh, I can't hear it, you know. So there's also another fan like below here that came with the booth, but it runs on, uh, you know, it doesn't run on regular U.S. electricity. It runs on like, you know, 220. So and I had to buy a, a box from Amazon to convert. So for this, I think that the ones that the booths that they sell now. So I have this fan down here. I have the fan up there. So, you know, you get some pretty decent ventilation.
Um, the one concern I know some people have about the studio bricks is this big glass door, giant glass door that's right here. Um, honestly, I don't think I've had um, much problem with it. I don't think it's really created much of a problem. I mean, when you're in a small booth like this, you're going to get like odd resonances. I know I get something around 600 that is probably caused by this little room. It could be caused by this door, but it's nothing that I can't overcome. And quite honestly, having this uh, floor to ceiling glass door here, it makes it a lot less, <laughs> makes it a, really a lot less claustrophobic and weird being in here for long periods of time. And I'm in, in, I'm in this box all day. So I like it, and, you know, it faces, it faces out. So like if somebody needs to get my attention, they just walk in my office here and then they wave at me. Um, but yeah, so I know some people are like, oh, the door causes problems. But if you had to, you could always put something over the door, right? Foam, you could just get a piece of foam cut and just put it over there. And trust me, it's not going to be as much fun in here. Um, but yeah, overall, um, I love the Studio Bricks booth. I do wish it was a little bit larger. I mean, so inside here from shoulder to shoulder, you know, inside with the treatment in here from the door here, I have, uh, that's about 33 inches. So um, what I had to do also here is because it was it's small-ish, I had to build this desk here. So I had to custom build this desk. I've never built any furniture. So it was pretty easy. It's um, it's two foot wide by a foot deep. And, you know, uh, it, it serves its purpose. I've got a 32-inch monitor sitting here. And, you know, just my my stuff here. I have a little... I built a custom little little mug holder over here. It's a little crude looking, but it works. And um, so, yeah, Studio Bricks One booth. I love this thing. And I would absolutely recommend that if it's something that you want to buy, um, a booth, a voiceover booth, will make a huge difference. Because I started my career in a walk-in closet. And although that was uh, functional and it was comfortable, it wasn't uncomfortable. You know, and I put foam on the ceiling and all kinds of stuff, or, and it just wasn't the thing. So it wasn't going to be a long-term solution, um, but a booth is. So I'm I'm extremely glad that I purchased this, and um, it is abso absolutely more than paid for itself many, 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 many times over. And it's a great investment in your future if you want to do if you want to do professional voiceover, um, having a treated space that you can occupy at any time of day or night. And not worry about trucks rumbling by or, you know, most most things that will, will totally destroy your take if you're not in a treated space or a well-treated space. A booth really alleviates that stress. So, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, let me know if you have any other questions about the Studio Bricks booth. Um, I know that they're not the cheapest in the world to get, but... Uh, it's, it's a great, great product. So um, my, my hat's off to Studio Bricks. So what do you think? All right. Let me know in the comments. All right, until next time, this is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, Fading to Black. And even better, it was listed by a seller in the next town over. So I messaged the guy right away and I'm like, can I come take a look at it? And he's like, of course. So I drive the seven miles to his house and there it is sitting in the back of a box truck because this guy buys um, storage locker auctions, right? Like like that, that uh, show Storage Wars, right? So he bought this thing. He'd just gotten it like two, three days earlier. And um, this guy, this guy's house was incredible. His entire garage was so full of like, like stuff from, from storage lockers. And he showed me some crazy stuff too, including a cell phone that belonged to a, um, a young pop artist <laughs> whose name will not be revealed. And uh, that person had been communicating, communicating with an underage girl. And so he shows me this thing and I'm like, are you selling it to TMZ? And he's like, no, I contacted this, this person's, this artist's rep. And uh, we'll see what happens. And since I never saw it on TMZ, I'm guessing the artist bought it back for probably a premium.